in my three books called Carvings from the Felt, I concentrate on rifles that were used during the Anglo-Boer War that had names or decorations carved onto the stocks of the rifles. There were also uh, a smaller quantities of rifles which were ordered by the Boer Republics uh, that took part during the Boer War. Today I'm going to talk about one of the more unusual rifles that was used during the Boer War of 1899 and 1902. This rifle is the M1894 Krag Jorgensen rifle made by Steyr and it was one of the Norwegian Krags uh, that were very popular with Boer officers and also some of the Boer officials in the ZAR. There was some resistance to the adoption of the uh, uh, M1894 Krag Jorgensen rifle. Uh, as you can imagine, the ZAR was a, a, a wealthy little republic. They had uh, vast quantities of gold and after the Jamison reign of 1896, they were ordering large quantities of, of rifles. Uh, many of the gun agents or dealers in the ZAR were approaching uh, Peter Jobert, who's the Commandant General, to try and secure some big orders uh, for, for various rifles. And we're talking about Mannlichers, different models of Mauser, Lee Metfords, uh, and of course, Craig Jorkinson. Uh, already, uh, Peter Jobert had placed orders for at least 10,000 uh, Mauser rifles in M, uh, M1895 M bore Mauser rifles in 7x57 calibre. He wasn't really keen on the idea of uh, the box magazine, which is peculiar to the, uh, to the Krag. And also, he was a bit concerned about the 6.5 millimeter caliber. He initially wasn't happy about the 7 millimeter caliber, as he was a Martini Henry man, which I've mentioned before. He liked the, uh, the big heavy duty 577 450 Martini. They had a few problems with supply coming from, from Norway, but in fact, there were 331, as I said, arrived in total. Uh, it turns out that this rifle uh, was brought home to Australia by number 75 trooper Graham Stewart of A Squadron New South Wales Mounted Rifles. Now he uh, he previously served in the New South Wales Artillery for two years and he joined up very shortly after war broke out. Um, 11th of uh, no, October 1899 is when war was declared and on the 3rd of November he enlisted with the New South Wales Mounted Rifles and off he went to South Africa. He landed in Cape Town in early December and was sent up to Daar, which is just below the uh, OVS Republic, uh, and took part in operations against the Boers. He was actually involved in the uh, operations to relieve the town of Kimberley. And after the relief of Kimberley, uh, the forces moved on to chase Pitt Cronier, uh, who'd left his uh, establishment or lager at Nagerstentain and was heading back towards Blimfontein. He was actually stopped by uh, General French with a small uh, uh, body of men, about 1,500 men, whereas Cronier had about 4,000 men. French stopped him in his tracks and uh, Cronier decided to dig in at Paderberg. Uh, very fortunately for the British, uh, a large quantity of British troops, about 15,000, arrived the next day and all of a sudden the tables turned. Cronier dug in, as I said, and there was a fierce 10-day battle in which uh, there was uh, severe frontal attacks which were ordered by Kitchener who showed his true colours and that he was a pretty brutal guy and didn't really care too much about the number of men who, who he lost with his uh, suicidal attacks, you might say. Uh, Roberts had been laid up with a fever but he arrived the next day and he was quite horrified at the, uh, at the carnage which had happened under Kitchener's orders so he uh, stopped the frontal attacks and started a heavy bombardment. Uh, this went on for about 10 days. Uh, at the end of the uh, 10 days, uh, Cronier finally surrendered. Now, you can imagine that there were 4,000 burghers uh, who laid down their arms, many of which were officers. We do know that many officers did actually have Krog, uh, Craig Jorgensons. Now, what we do know, uh, and this is where the provenance comes in, is that number 75, uh, Trooper Graham Stewart, was actually in a squadron and they were the only squadron of the New South Wales Mounted Rifles who were at Piderberg. So we can imagine 4,000 rifles being stacked up. Uh, there were a lot of men picking eyes out of uh, rifles, I would have imagined. The interesting thing was Lord Roberts uh, asked for A Squadron New South Wales Mounted Rifles to be the escort for Cronier. So they were the baggage train that took Cronier back down to Cape Town uh, and onto POW camp. Uh, as I said, we know that this, this guy, uh, Stuart, was in that unit. Uh, they were the only new unit of uh, New South Wales Minded Rifles who were at Piderberg. 
So did he pick it up there? Was it one of the uh, crags owned by one of the officers at Paderberg? There's a very good possibility. After uh, the uh, Battle of uh, Paderberg, uh, he came up, this is uh, Stuart, Trooper Stuart, came up from Cape Town and they proceeded uh, on the, uh, the way to, to Blimpontein. He uh, was in action at uh, Abrams Kyle and also at Riefontein. And when they eventually got to uh, Blimpontein, Roberts had a real problem on his hands because uh, there was polluted water in the, uh, the, the river at Paderberg and there were dead horses, there were dead men in the water, but the, uh, the troops were that thirsty, they were actually drinking the water and not boiling it. So there was a huge epidemic which broke out in, in Bloemfontein. Roberts was hoping to go on and march on, uh, on Pretoria, which couldn't happen. Uh, there was up to 50 men died in one day. 6,000 of the troops uh, got enteric fever, and there were over 1,000 who died from the fever. It took uh, well over a month to get this under control. Uh, after that, we do know that uh, number 75, Trooper uh, Graham Stewart, proceeded on towards the, uh, the attack on, on, on Pretoria. He got as far as Bruntfort, uh, and he was involved in a couple of other actions. It's very interesting to note in his uh, record that uh, he was actually appointed as a galloper for General French, and also that uh, he was wounded in action, and also his horse was shot from under him. Well, he also actually... Uh, called enteric fever. Obviously not that bad that he, uh, he passed away, but he was sent back down to Cape Town uh, and invalided home. So he went back home in July of 1900. So he was in the field, uh, Paderberg was the 27th of uh, February 1900, and he left uh, Cape Town uh, in, uh, in July. So he was only three months in the field. Now it's possible that he might have picked up this crag somewhere else, but there seems to be a fairly good likelihood that it was actually from Paderberg. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, this gentleman who went back, Mr. Stewart, brought this rifle back. We know for a fact there were only ever three owners. Uh, he had a lifelong friend whose name was Sutter. And um, 22 years, 1922, the original owner passed away. This is number 75, uh, Graham Stewart. And he actually gave this rifle to his best friend who had it for 54 years. He didn't actually shoot it, but he had it in the cupboard. So really, this rifle has been a sleeper for all those years. It's in beautiful condition. It really is. It's almost like a, a brand new rifle. Um, at the age of 94, uh, this gentleman, Mr. Sutter, decided to sell the rifle, and it was sold to a, a local Queensland collector. And it's been in his collection for quite some years, until recently it was sold to a friend of mine. Unfortunately, it's not in my collection. Uh, the subject who brought this rifle back um, as I said, there's number 75, uh, Graham Stewart. He actually re-enlisted uh, in the Australian Commonwealth Horse and he enlisted in May 1902. Now, the war actually ended on the 31st of May 1902. So he went over, sailed over to South Africa, arrived in Durban, and by the time he arrived, the war was over. So he'd gone back for a second dose, but in actual fact, by the time he got there, the show was over. Uh, he was sent back home again and went on to enlist in World War I. So he was a, a, a pretty keen old fighter, this bloke. He didn't last long in, in uh, World War I. He enlisted in 1915, but uh, unfortunately went overseas to the Middle East. Uh, within about a month, he contracted the disease again and was sent home, invalided back home to Australia. So there we have it, um, most unusual and rare Craig Jorgensen rifle. Uh, model 1894 in 6.5 by 55 caliber. I hope you enjoy the story.